Hey guys, how's it going? I'm back here with another video and today I decided to bring this video where I'm going to be introducing to you guys three different levels of writing CSS in React. So I will show you examples and technologies that are used by beginners, intermediate and advanced React developers to style their projects. By doing this, I hope I can give you guys some insights and even possibly suggest to you guys some technology that you guys might like in the future. So before we get into the video, if you could leave a like and subscribe, I would massively appreciate it. And let's get into the video. So for a React beginner, um, it is kind of hard to know what to do, especially because you're probably coming from a situation where you've learned vanilla JavaScript, you've learned a little bit of CSS, maybe even built some websites using HTML, um, and you're trying to transition all that logic into learning React. So at this stage, I think a lot of developers should put aside their need to style their websites and just focus on learning the logical and um, UI part of React. So what's common in this stage is to either just use normal basic CSS, so no other frameworks or anything like that, or to use something that they were already using before starting to learn React. The reason why they wanna do something like this is because they don't wanna spend a lot of time even caring about CSS. Because if you're trying to learn everything at once, um, you're basically not learning anything at all. So focusing on React is the main priority. Thus, their projects might look a little bit ugly, which is fine. I do this in every one of my videos. If you've seen one of my tutorials, I always, uh, if it's a beginner tutorial, I always start by saying that CSS doesn't matter in this tutorial and I don't actually show myself coding it because it doesn't matter. Sometimes you should just focus on one specific topic in order to be able to master all of them. Now, I mentioned that um, um, you might start uh, using some sort of um, technology that you were using previously. And an example of that is a lot of beginners try to use Bootstrap in React. And that's fine. I'm going to talk a lot about Bootstrap in this video. However, um, it is very common and that happened to me too, because Bootstrap is very commonly used in normal HTML and vanilla JavaScript. And it's very common for uh, developers who are learning React to go on Google and search how to use Bootstrap in React, probably download a library such as React Bootstrap and use it in their projects, right? Um, I'm not saying I don't recommend doing that, but I'm saying that if you're a beginner, I don't think you should be spending your time doing that or even learning the library. It is a component-based library. Uh, so it's something we're gonna touch upon later on in this video, but I would probably stay away from Bootstrap if you're a beginner, um, unless you really need to build something that looks remotely good. Uh, I would just focus on learning React and that's fine as well. So that's basically what a React beginner would be using to style their projects. Not only that, but um, beginners probably will be uh, learning the different ways to um, put CSS inside of their React apps. Um, they might learn CSS modules, how to use um, their class names um, in React as JavaScript. Uh, they also might learn some inline styling. A lot of beginners like to just write their CSS directly in, like inside of their JavaScript. It is nice because um, it allows you to use variables from your project um, in your CSS. However, the drawbacks is that uh, it's kind of unorganized. It kind of, you don't, you, there's no separation between um, your CSS and your actual HTML or your actual JavaScript. So it's kind of confusing. However, it is perfectly common to do something like that as a beginner. Now we're going to talk about where most people probably are, um, which is the intermediate stage. So at this point, you probably learned uh, uh, React. At least you got to a point where you can build projects with it. You learned probably states, you probably learn a couple hooks. You're, you're, you understand, um, when you look at React code, you understand what it means, right? So what exactly would you do at this stage? Well, at this stage, a lot of developers start picking up some cool UI component libraries. So you see uh, some names being thrown around, such as Material UI, Semantic UI, um, I don't know, like Ant Design, like uh, libraries like this, where um, they can provide to you pre-made components where the styling is already done and a lot of the logic and UI logic is already um, abstracted inside of those components. So in Material UI, for example, you might see a component called Pagination or something like that, which gives you all of the um, logic and styling for creating pagination inside of your project. Or you might see for even smaller stuff like buttons and inputs, uh, they already make the component for you. You just have to import it and put it inside of your project. Well, the positives of doing something like this and the reason why a lot of intermediate developers 
um, use something like this is because it allows you to make your website look uh, somewhat good looking uh, without spending too much time in it. Um, and it's it really saves you a lot of headache by just using a pre made component. But there are indeed a lot of drawbacks to using something like that. For example, um, it is really easy to see if someone used a library such as uh, the ones I listed to make the website. So um, if everyone is using the same uh, components to build their UI, uh, that means a lot of websites out there are um, look the same, right? So an example of this is with Bootstrap. Um, and React Bootstrap, by the way, is another type of, li of component library for styling in React. Um, what happens with Bootstrap is everyone knows it's a Bootstrap website when they see it. So a lot of developers just spend a lot of time trying to make their websites not look like it was made with Bootstrap, which is counterintuitive because uh, the whole point of Bootstrap is to make your website look good with um, not spending a lot of time styling it. But now you see yourself um, spending a lot of time styling it so that it doesn't look like bootstrap, which is annoying. It's something that I don't understand. And I used to do this as well. So you got to be careful with something like this. Also, um, it is important to understand that a lot of these libraries kind of make it hard for you to um, like change how the stuff looks. Uh, because since it's already pre made, it is expected of you to already use the styles that comes with it or to already use kind of the uh, the components that come with it. So if you want to make some edits to them or add some functionality to the button or something like that, um, it, it gets kind of hard. So I would say that's definitely a drawback you should consider as well. Um, but it's perfectly good enough for intermediate developers to use it because I feel like at this stage, you're not too worried about optimizing your CSS. So it doesn't really matter. However, um, when we get to the advanced stage, that's when it's going to be really important. Okay, so now we are in the advanced level for writing CSS in react. So what exactly could you see at this stage? Well, at this point, uh, I believe Re react developers are already good with react, they're advanced at react. Um, and they're just trying to find different ways to optimize their developing experience. So for example, if they can write the same amount of code, um, but 10 times faster, um, they might want to learn such a technology that will help them get there, even though it will spend they'll have to spend a lot of time learning it, because um, they're optimizing for the long run, right. So they're just finding all the different aspects of their developing experience, um, in order to make it to make them the best developers. And CSS is important at this stage, because there's a lot of really, really nice ways to write CSS in react for advanced projects. And those are the ones I'm going to list right now. So I see advanced react developers writing CSS in two different ways, either using a CSS in, J in JavaScript approach, or using some sort of library that provide them with some utility classes. So I'll explain you exactly what they mean. Basically, CSS in JavaScript is a way to write CSS, where it's going to be completely integrated with your JavaScript application. So in react, we have a couple of libraries that help you with that. Um, a perfectly good example of that. And it's an example that I really like is stout components. I have a lot of tutorials on stout components if you're interested in that. But it's a library where you're probably seeing in the screen over here. It's basically, um, it allows you to write components that are purely style based and using JavaScript to write them. So you put CSS, however, inside of JavaScript, and you can uh, change dynamically how your styling looks by using your own JavaScript code. So for example, I could, uh, if I wanted to make something look different based on a variable, I could just pass in a prop to to a component and style components, and that would work and change the color depending on uh, what I show. So that's something that is really cool. And there are other libraries as well out there that provide you with the ability to write CSS in JavaScript. Um, two good examples are emotion and linaria. They're really good. But I would recommend you spending some time doing research if you're interested in using this approach. On the other hand, we have a utility class um, approach where um, there are a couple of libraries out there, which basically provide you with um, a collection of class names um, in, in CSS, where each class name represents or replaces um, some lines of CSS code. So a perfect example of this would be something like Tailwind CSS, 
um, where they have a bunch of class names. And um, depending on what class names you add to a specific HTML element, um, that element will look a little bit different. So technically, you can just write a single word, and that would represent three lines of CSS code. Now you might have seen something similar to this, for example, bootstrap, not react bootstrap, like normal bootstrap, uh, you usually have classes that you um, use to build your website. However, with Tailwind CSS, it's actually incredible. They have a lot of different um, classes out there. It doesn't look the same, like all the websites using Tailwind, you, you don't really think they look the same. And to be honest, it improves your coding efficiency by a lot. Like I wasn't using Tailwind CSS um, that much uh, until a friend of mine who's also a React YouTuber, Theo from Ping, you guys might know him. Um, he recommended it to me because he uses it a lot. Um, and I started using it. And in the beginning, I was like, okay, I understand what the point of this is, but I don't see the immediate results. But I, I definitely um, struggle through it and got to a point where I started memorizing the class names, which is exactly what the point of this is. You won't spend a lot of time um, checking out which class names you want to use later on. You'll do that in the beginning. But after I don't know, a month of, of learning all the different class names, you'll become really good at just being able to build a really cool UI, however you want it to look by just using the class names provided by Tailwind CSS. So this is really good for optimizing the time spent writing your UI. And um, this is obviously in the case where you're actually building your and styling your website. Um, but anyways, it will look good um, if you're using something like Tailwind. And the whole point of this is to just make your write code faster, optimize your CSS, which is something that you should be worrying about if you are an advanced React developer. Now, which library should you choose or which approach should you choose? Well, it doesn't really matter. It literally doesn't. The more you get into the later stages of your programming journey, you'll notice that um, a lot of libraries just do the same thing. And it all depends on what is better for you. So like, we're all different. So we all are more efficient using different methods. So if you find it more efficient to do it one way, it doesn't mean that another person will find it as well. So um, just keep in mind, try everything out and see whatever, like see what resonates more with you and what you actually enjoy coding more because you don't want to be unhappy coding with one approach. Uh, when you could just be happier using something else, right? For example, I used to use style components all the time, because I'm used to how a react app looks with style components. Does it mean that uh, I will use it forever? No, I'm using tailwind right now, because I really enjoyed after trying it out. But again, does it mean I'm going to be using tailwind forever? No, I might just switch it back to style components. There's no correct answer. At the end of the day, a lot of developers trying to find the correct tool to use when they should be really looking for the best tool for them. So that's really what I wanted to talk about. So if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like down below and comment what you want to see next. Subscribe because I'm posting twice a week and I'll massively appreciate it. Uh, I really wanted to thank everyone for the support on my full eight hour react course that I posted. Um, it's doing pretty well and you guys really, really enjoyed it. Um, I'm excited to bring more content for you guys. And yeah, that's basically it. So thanks again for watching and I see you guys next time.